Uh, hello, my name is Alex Milovanovic. I come from the University of Belgrade, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. And on behalf of my colleagues and me, I would like to present you our research topic prepared for this conference uh, with the title name, Influence of Printing Parameters on the Eligibility of Plain Strain Fracture Toughness Results for PLA Polymer. Uh, for the introduction, first I want to share with you some information about this material we are testing. So this PLA, with the long name polylactic acid, is a thermoplastic material uh, commonly used in FDM technology. So this FDM technology is an extrusion-based additive manufacturing uh, technology which uses this thermoplastic materials uh, in form of a filament uh, wrapped around a spool. So, uh, this PLA material is nowadays probably the most used uh, material in this technology uh, because of its origin. You can produce this material from cornstarch, cassava roots or some other renewable resource. So, it is a biodegradable material and uh, there are certain comments of people who work in uh, 3D printing that this PLA material is uh, quite easy to manufacture components from it and um, uh, also to emphasize that this material has a low material shrinking because uh, in that way uh, the created parts will have better dimensional accuracy uh, compared with the CAD model used um, in the process than, in any, than with, the, with any other uh, FDM material, but the disadvantage of the PLA material is in the area of uh, mechanical properties. So, even though PLA has high yield and ultimate tensile stress, uh, all in all uh, components made out of this material have less capacity to withstand larger deformations. Uh, concerning the testing, uh, Thermoplastic materials uh, have certain issues concerning their amorphous nature. So, in testing you may apply uh, more specimens than uh, needed in the standard just to uh, select uh, better results uh, from uh, your uh, tested batch. And uh, uh, not only uh, this problem, but uh, concerning the additive manufacturing, you also must add printing parameters uh, as a significant influence on mechanical properties of final products. So, from, the, from our previous research and from some literature findings, we see that infill density, layer height and infill pattern have high impact on mechanical properties and uh, their influence is uh, in this particular order. So, first the infill density has the highest uh, uh, influence, then the layer height, and the next is the infill pattern. And that's how uh, we uh, arranged our testing. So, uh, we use the SCMB specimens for plain strain fracture toughness uh, testing of PLA material. So, uh, uh, we, uh, our specimens have the variation in infill density, so we wanted to see how the infill density influences on mechanical properties of this material. So, we used uh, specimen batches from 10% to 100% uh, infill density with a 10% increment. Uh, because of the vast, vast number of uh, specimens which we would need in this, uh, in this testing, we um, used the same uh, layer height, uh, which was set at 0.2 millimeters, and the same infill uh, pattern shape, which is honeycomb, in all specimens. Uh, so, the tests were conducted according to particular uh, ASTM standard for plain strain fracture toughness uh, assessment. So, our SCMB specimens uh, have all the same dimensions. So, in bulk, uh, the width of the specimens is 20 millimeters, uh, they are 10 millimeters thick, thick and 88 millimeters long. 
Uh, all the SCMB specimens have the notches, which are 3D printed in our case. So from the previous literature findings, we've shown that it, it is better to 3D print them uh, rather than mill them. So uh, the dimensions of our uh, notches are 1 millimeters in width, 8 millimeters in height, with a tip angle of 45 degree. Uh, the pre-crack length is uh, 10 millimeters, so we applied additional 2 millimeters uh, in the notch to create the pre-crack. And uh, because we use the SCMB specimen, um, uh, the particular standard uh, suggests that for SCMB specimens we use three-point bending test fixture. So uh, the distance between supporting pins on three-point bending test picture is set at uh, 80 millimeters constant for this SCMB specimens. Uh, the CAD model of our specimens are shown uh, on uh, the pictures below. Here you see all the, the mentioned dimensions. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, these SCMB specimens during 3D printing. So on the picture above, you see 10% uh, infill density batch, the lowest infill density batch. In the middle, you see the 50%, and below is the full infill density batch. So we use 10 specimen batches uh, with different infill densities. So that is 10, uh, 10 times 4 specimens per batch. Uh, we needed 3 specimens as mandatory, defined by standard, and we used one additional sort of a replacement uh, specimen. So in total, we have uh, 40 specimens. All the specimens, you see them on the, on the left-hand side, 9 batches. Uh, they are are all labeled, so we didn't have, you know, a concern uh, which one is which. And uh, on the notch, we created this red lines on the top, on the front surface of the specimen, and also on the back, uh, indicating um, how long the the pre-crack should be lo should be uh, long. So uh, the pre-crack we inserted using a razor blade. So we placed a razor blade in the notch and created the pre-crack with a hammer tapping on that uh, razor blade. So the, the length was about two millimeters. Uh, the pre-crack length was about two millimeters to three millimeters. Uh, Concerning the, bend, the bending loan specimens, which are the SCMB specimens, uh, you need to create a straight crack path from the crack initiation up to specimen failure for the test to be uh, valid. So there are some uh, uh, conditions which must be met uh, for this particular standard. So the specimens must have sufficient uh, size for the plane strain criterion to be met. Uh, a crack must be sharp enough to ensure linear elastic behavior until the reached maximum force, and the pre-crack must be long enough to avoid excessive plasticity. As a result, you'll have a proper fracture toughness value, which represents a lower limit value uh, used to estimate the relation between failure stress and effect size for a uh, tested material. So during our testing on three-point bending test fixture, we used a constant uh, stroke speed of the, of the uh, top pin, uh, which was set at five millimeters uh, per minute. Uh, so during the fracture toughness test, uh, the crack propagates from a tip of a pre-crack until a certain point will, where failure will occur. And in, from the uh, initial point to the final point, you must uh, have a straight path, which is mandatory for the eligibility of the test. Uh, any any uh, uh, creation of the crack path in different, in, with different angulation on, on, on different, uh, in different paths is uh, considered as the failure of the test. 
So, um, a main issue with the fracture toughness tests with LT manufacturing uh, materials is the delocalization of the crack from the expected crack propagation path. So, um, these 3D printed specimens have uh, certain features which may influence uh, on the fracture toughness tests. So, uh, all of the specimens have top and bottom layers. Uh, the, the top layers you can see on the, on the images on the left hand side. You have the impulse structure which is inside and outlines. So, the top and bottom layers are printed in pool density. In between these top and bottom layers is the infrastructure, where you have uh, probably the lower material percentage. Uh, depends on uh, the parameters you set, but the idea is to have the lower uh, density inside, and this material should be arranged in particular patterns. So I told you that we use the hexagon uh, structure. So inside, uh, between these top and bottom layers, you have uh, this, the setting of this hexagons all inside the structure and around uh, the top and bottom layers and this infill structure are the outlines which just an envelope this uh, infill structure and also the top and bottom layers. Uh, you see the outlines on the images on the left hand side uh, on the upper image you see three of them, so they can be resembled from the, from the, from the images. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the problem we had is that um, uh, in first uh, iteration we used more uh, of these um, outlines, we used three, so with a two millimeter, uh, with a pre-crack uh, of 2.5 millimeter long. Uh, the first specimens uh, didn't, you know, um, uh, cut these outlines. So the the, the tip of the pre-crack was somewhere in the in the outline structure. So during the test, uh, the uh, the the crack didn't start to 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 go uh, uh, from the initial phase. But it sort of created this uh, stress concentration somewhere in between these outlines from where uh, the crack started uh, to propagate uh, with a certain angulation. So we didn't have a uh, straight uh, line for our crack propagation. In next iteration, we used uh, two outlines. So these two outlines are two millimeters thick and with application of uh, a longer pre-crack. The pre-crack breaches these outlines and uh, is somewhere in the infill structure. So during the test, the, there is no problems with the, uh, with the crack propagation. So uh, it initiates and propagates until failure with a straight, uh, with a straight line. And uh, the influence on uh, force uh, displacement diagrams uh, uh, you can see in this slide. So uh, on the slide on the left hand side you see how a um, uh, result looks like for uh, applied two outlines. So there is a immediate uh, crack propagation. Crack in, uh, crack propagation and uh, the, there is a straight line of, of, of force data until the, the, the maximum uh, uh, is reached. So there is uh, no peaks in the result whatsoever, uh, but on the other side uh, with uh, applied three uh, outlines uh, because of the created stress concentration in the in the in between outlines, uh, there will be some uh, force peaks on the force displacement diagrams, resulting in uh, a test uh, failure. So this type of specimens are considered as invalid. And uh, uh, here on this slide, you see the results of. Our, um, 
of our testing. So we've seen that uh, the infill density has uh, a large uh, influence on uh, the test results. So from the lowest infill density to the highest, we have uh, the, the range of um, uh, K1C values from 0 0.38 to 2.69 megapascal square root meter, showing this high influence of um, uh, infill, infill density parameter. And um, these um, uh, fracture toughness results, first fracture toughness results are considered as uh, conditional until they satisfy the size criterion. For the size criterion, uh, we use the yield stress values for every, for every infill dens density independently, since they are different, and here you see some results in the table on this slide. Uh, the results for this fracture toughness uh, test show that um, all the specimens meet the size criterion except uh, one specimen from the 60% infill density batch, uh, namely the specimen number three. And he, it crossed uh, the size criterion value by 0 0.08 millimeters, but because we used uh, one uh, specimen more than needed. Uh, still, the results from the from this batch are uh, correct. We just uh, dismissed the result from the this specimen uh, three. Uh, so, uh, as a reflection on uh, fracture toughness uh, results, this particular specimen holds higher value than all other three. Uh, specimens from this uh, particular batch. And uh, for the conclusion, we've shown that some printing parameters have a significant effect on mechanical properties of 3D printed parts. And concerning uh, the fracture toughness assessment, uh, printing parameters may not only have a high Im impact on final results, but may also question the eligibility of the test, such as we've shown with, uh, with the applied outlines. So um, the selected printing parameters must ensure that you'll have uh, a straight uh, crack path and linear behavior on uh, force displacement uh, diagram of all of your specimens. We've shown that it is better to use a smaller number of outlines to result in linear behavior of, um, of uh, linear behavior during the test or the linear propagation of force values. Uh, so we used uh, the, the all available infill densities in our uh, software from 10 to 100 percent with a 10 percent increment showing the high range of uh, K1C values with the variation of uh, infill densities from 0 0.38 to 2.69 megapascal square root meter, showing that infill density has high impact. Also worth mentioning is that uh, in the 70% infill density, we used only three specimens due to specimen failure before the test from that particular batch. And comparing the results in between tested batches, we can see that the high force values achieved during the test in most of the higher infill density batches results in, result in uh, the size criterion value closer to the limiting uh, 10 millimeters. And the batches with lower infill density have the size criterion results notably below the limiting uh, 10 millimeter value. So, uh, just to point out that if the size criterion is not satisfied, this test would prove to be invalid. And for the next, next iteration, larger specimens uh, would be needed. This is all, and thank you for your attention.